Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucky here. Today we're going to go over the biggest mistakes players are making from 50 to 70. These are huge mistakes. They're going to waste a lot of time. They're going to cost you a lot of money or they're going to cost you a lot of frustration. And I'm seeing a lot of players make these mistakes. So you might be one of them. So let's talk about what they are and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes as well. The first mistake I see a lot of players making is lingering in World Tier 3 for too long. There's a lot of reasons you don't want to be in World Tier 3 any longer than you need to. For one, you can't get ancestral gear in World Tier 3, so it is capped in terms of its effectiveness and its lifespan on your character. So one of the things that you can and probably should do is try to get your character into World Tier 4 sometime closer to 60 than to 70. The World Tier 4 capstone dungeon or the capstone dungeon to enter World Tier 4 is a level 70 dungeon, but you can do it anytime you want. And 60 is a really good time to start trying because at level 60, you can start wearing ancestral gear. Now, there's another really good argument for getting to World Tier 4 sooner than later. That is, in World Tier 3, you're getting a massive 100% XP bonus. But in World Tier 4, you're getting 200% bonus XP. So you're getting twice as much bonus XP in World Tier 4 as you are in World Tier 3. So 4 is where you want to be. Not only are you getting substantially more experience for everything you're doing in the world in World Tier 4, but you're also getting a chance at those ancestral items while you're doing it. And those ancestral items are the ones that you're going to wear for the rest of the game. The sooner that you can find those and the sooner you can start investing in those pieces of gear, the sooner your character is going to see serious power. Now, when you first get to World Tier 4, you might feel a little weak. There's a lot of reasons for that. One, you're level 60 and the mobs here are going to be between 70 and 73. There are some exceptions and there are some things that you can do to take advantage of World Tier 4. One of the things you can do is go to Legions. There are group events and there's always someone there that could solo the entire Legion themselves. At this point, there are a lot of players that are incredibly powerful in World Tier 4. So go tag along with those players in the Legions and you're going to get some of the best XP per minute in the entire game when you are participating in these World Tier 4 Legions. So utilize that. You're also going to get great chances to get drops in Legions. These drops can include ancestral items, which are going to be massive power spikes for your character. Besides that, those Legions are going to give you things like the Ghastly Mount. That's the one I'm riding all the time that looks like this right here. So you're going to get this mount from those Legions. You're going to get gear from those Legions and you're going to get obols from those legions, which kind of leads us into another interesting topic that a lot of players don't know about when it comes to the level 50 to 70 range. And that is you cannot gamble for ancestral items until you hit level 73. More on that in a moment, but first sponsor. And while we're on the topic of amazing games, this one has some of the best 3D models I've ever seen. It's a mix of fantasy, chill and gacha RPG gameplay. It's got seven factions and hundreds of heroes to choose from. Plus, it's perfect for both casual and hardcore gamers. You can play it anywhere. The Dragon Abyss is especially awesome as you can collect various resources with different attributes to activate awesome buffs and strategize with your team and skills to take down the ultimate boss in Pilferer's Blitz. Plus, score some Dragon Egg rewards while you're at it. And yeah, it's free to play, so come get your hero on. By the way, guys, I've got some big news for you all. Ever Legion's first anniversary is coming up and they'll be dishing out rewards like crazy. First of all, log into the game to get 100 draws. That's right, 100 draws. You can pull amazing cards like Constant she happens to be my favorite hero. She is a human warrior who not only charges to break through the enemy formation and quickly cut the back row, but she can also add 30% attack buff to the entire team. Guess what? You can even participate in the lucky draw event for free. There's a chance to win a full combination of all the heroes, including the super rare divine and demonic characters, Alexio and Kthur, and even Razul, the top demonic mage. That's not all. You can get all the upcoming heroes that will be released in the next year completely free. Last but not least, during the anniversary bash, there's going to be 30 extra 30 pull codes for everyone on the server. Ever Legion is really going all out this time, giving away tons of rewards. What are you waiting for? Jump on the battlefield and let's get in on the action. Download Ever Legion right now using the link in the description below. Oh yeah, don't forget to use the unlimited anniversary redeem code on screen right now for great gifts worth $100. If you win, let me know in the comments. All right, let's get back to the video. Once you start getting into the high 60s and the low 70s, it's very unlikely you're going to find an upgrade by gambling. And if you do find an upgrade, it's going to have a very limited use because it's going to be a sacred item. It's not going to be ancestral. So as soon as you get into World Tier 4 and get an ancestral item, you're going to replace that. And oftentimes you're already in World Tier 4 getting ancestral items and you're still being forced to gamble for sacred items because you're not 73 yet. So you've got a couple of options with your obols when you start getting into the really high 60s and the low 70s before you hit 
73. One is you can gamble on your alt. You can save those obols and it, they're going to be really useful on alts. Any alt that you have that's between 10 and 50, you know, those legendaries are going to really help give them nice power spikes if you're spending those obols on those characters. Another option, if you don't have alts or you're not interested in spending them on your alts, is to simply gamble for redundant aspects that your character is going to need as you're finding better ancestral items, right? And a lot of times we have like upgrade anxiety where we find a great item and we're afraid to put our aspect on it because we know once we imprint that aspect on that piece of gear, we can't take it off. And so one of the things you can do with those obols is, is gamble for redundant aspects. Try to find duplicates of your important aspects with those obols. That way, when you do find an upgrade, you're not stressed about imprinting that aspect onto it. You've got another one in the bag anyway. So that's a really solid use for those obols if you want to do that with them. And it's going to make gambling with your obols from like 67 to 73 feel a lot better than knowing you're just literally chucking those obols into the sea because you're getting sacred items when you're already farming ancestral items from World Tier 4 and from those nightmare dungeons that you're hopefully running. Which brings us to the next point. So there's items like Andariel's Visage. There's items like the Grandfather. There's items like the Harlequin Crest, right? These really ultra, ultra rare, unique items that exist in the game. And these items are most likely going to be found inside of Nightmare Dungeons, which is one of many, many reasons to spend a lot of time in Nightmare Dungeons once you get out of World Tier 2, once you get into 50 plus territory, right? Once you're farming World Tier 3 and World Tier 4, you really want to get into those Nightmare Dungeons as soon as possible. And there's going to be a lot of reasons for that. One of those reasons is that's where these uniques are going to be found. Now, the ultra rare uniques won't drop until you're killing level 85 mobs, which means you need to be running at minimum level 31 sigils, right? But level 31 sigils are very doable really early on in your 60s. You can start running those definitely in your 70s, right? You can definitely start running those level 31 sigils and starting to take a stab at getting those ultra rare uniques if you want. Now, they are incredibly rare and chances are you're not going to find them, but the chance is there only when you're killing level 85 mobs. So you want to get to a place where you're doing that. So you at least have the chance. Not only that, the higher the level the mobs you kill, the higher the item power that they are. And this is going to affect a lot more than you might think. So when you're killing higher level mobs, not only do you have a chance to get ancestrals, you have a much higher chance to get ancestrals than you do when you're killing lower level mobs in World Tier 4. So if you're running around in the overworld in Tier 4, you have a very small chance. Like you're going to find a ton of sacred items and a ton of regular legendaries, so like 625 items. And once in a while, you'll get an ancestral. Right. However, if you are in a nightmare dungeon, your chances of finding ancestral items goes through the roof. The higher the level of the nightmare dungeon, where when you start running the high level 30s, the level 40s and level 50s, right, you're going to be getting tons and tons of ancestral items, which means the items lean towards better stat rolls and they have better high end rolls. These are best in slot items. They can roll higher DPS. They can roll higher damage stats. Not only do you want to be getting ancestral items, but you want to be getting high item power ancestral items. Another thing that these high item powers affect is these items have a better chance. These ancestral items have a better chance of rolling a high value on the aspect. So when it comes to your legendary aspects and we look at one like this one here, which says Bone Spear's primary attack makes enemies vulnerable beyond hit. It could have rolled from 1.5 to 2.5, but it rolled a max of 2.5, right? It was a perfect roll there. And then on the next part, it says it deals 100% damage. It could have rolled between 50 and 100, but it rolled a perfect 100% bonus damage on this. And it's no coincidence that this was an ancestral legendary aspect, right? So when you are finding ancestrals, the chance that you get really good rolls on the aspects goes up as well. And that is partly why these have different colors and there's a differentiation between the different tiers of aspects. You can see these ones had a higher chance to roll well, and oftentimes they did roll well. Another common complaint I'm hearing from a lot of players right now that are just now getting to World Tier 3 or World Tier 4, and they're complaining about how fast they die. And it's completely their fault most of the time, okay? So if you've gotten to World Tier 3 and you've gotten to World Tier 4, you might be one of the people that's making this mistake, as a lot of people do. I myself had made the same mistake for a little bit when I first got there. And before I realized how important some of the defensive aspects were, 
armor and some of the defensive stats on our gear, right? If you build your character like a glass cannon and you don't have at least three defensive aspects on, you're going to die like a glass cannon. And if you're not picking up stats like increased armor, increased life and damage reduction on the pieces of gear that can obtain those stats, you're going to die very quickly in World Tier 3 and in World Tier 4, right? These stats are really, really important. So for instance, if we look at my pants here, we've got increased armor value as the first stat. We've got intelligence, which is just a great DPS stat. If you're going to have one on your pants, we've got increased life. And then we've also got damage reduction. So the total armor is incredibly powerful for mitigating damage. When you see that on an item, that's actually an incredibly good stat to have on an item, especially with how valuable armor is in Diablo right now. Armor is the single best like defensive stat in the game. So when you get a flat percent increase in your total armor on a piece of gear, that's actually really good. Same thing with life, getting a nice life roll on a piece of gear life. You would normally look at it and go, that's a boring stat that's a bad stat wrong actually getting life on your gear is incredibly powerful and it scales really well you want life on the pieces that can have life it's not a bad roll and if you avoid getting life you're gonna have a very small life pool and you're gonna get one shot or two shot constantly and you're gonna wonder why well it's because you're not including things like increased armor and life rolls on your pieces of gear same thing with damage reduction percent damage reductions like this are going to be huge and you get enough of these and a combination of all of these important stats on your pants your chest your your helmet, pieces of your jewelry, right? It's going to make a massive difference in your survivability. It's going to be the difference between you being one of those people that's running around one shotting things in high tier dungeons and being able to stand in the thick of it and battle out elites and kill them and being the guy that's like, yeah, I can do a lot of damage. But the second something looks at me, I fall over dead, right? You can do a lot of damage in Diablo while having these defensive aspects. This character that I'm on right now has all these defensive stats on this piece of gear, as well as a few other pieces of gear that she's wearing right now, right? And and she's still one shots things. She's still putting out millions of damage per cast. So don't think that just because you grab some defensive stats, it's going to ruin your damage. It's not. That's not how it works. In fact, the stats that you're giving up are often bait stats, right? There's a lot of stats in Diablo that look like they're going to be a good stat, like increased damage to crowd controlled enemies. But in reality, it's actually doing very little for your character. Same thing with increased damage to chilled enemies or increased damage. Any of these stats that all kind of fall into this one bucket that just kind of gets added together and then thrown into the formula in a way that really really makes them not very meaningful. So basically anything that isn't increased vulnerable damage, increased crit chance, increased crit damage, increased to your main stat. So on this character, intelligence, those are the four you want to keep. Those are the four stats that are always going to be really good and really powerful and going to scale really, really well with some very minor exceptions. But generally speaking, those are your, those are your four stats that like you really want to soup up on pretty much every build in this game right now. Everything else is pennies in the bucket. It's drops on the water, right? It's not doing a whole lot. Those other stats are the ones you want to give up for the sake of survivability and you're hardly going to notice the damage loss but you're definitely going to notice the survivability that you gain a really good rule of thumb is to have at least three defensive aspects on any time those defensive aspects will definitely include this one right here which is the aspect of disobedience that's the one that gives you armor when you attack enemies so with this one you definitely want to be the first person to attack you never want to run up to a group of enemies and then let them hit you first you won't have accrued this extra 45 or 50 percent armor bonus right we just talked about how huge armor bonus was we took that top stat there that's giving us 8.7 percent armor and we were really excited about that this aspect can give us up to 50 percent increased armor right that's such a massive increase in our armor and our survivability as a result so definitely make sure when you're running this aspect that you're always the first one to hit throw your damage into the enemy so you proc these armor gains before they get a chance to hit you that's going to be really important every build in the game is running this aspect right now and every build in the game should be running this aspect right now it's just that good other really good aspects for defenses are like aspect of the protector it comes from the lost archives in fractured peaks it's one of the very first dungeons you can do and it's an incredibly good aspect from the very beginning of the game to the very end of the game so take advantage of that one anytime you're not sure which three defensive aspects to wear there's two easy choices aspect of disobedience aspect of the protector that's going to give you a huge barrier every time you attack an elite and it's going to happen every 30 seconds and it auto refills itself every 30 seconds you get a brand new barrier that's going to basically double or triple your effective health pool. It's huge. 
So you take advantage of those two. And then the, for the third defensive aspect, it can be anything you want. Sometimes there's class specific ones that are really useful. Sometimes there's ones like this where becoming injured while crowd controlled grants you unstoppable. So when are you going to die? Usually it's because you get crowd controlled and your CC break is down. Your crowd control break is down. The ability that you use to break free, right, is on cooldown and you can't get out of it. This will pop you out of it in those situations. It'll pop you out. You can start spamming your potions, get out of that damage and survive. On top of the three defensive aspects and the defensive stats that we mentioned, you're going to run and run skulls and your jewelry. This is going to give you more armor. And as you now know, armor is going to be such an important stat when it comes to your survivability. And in your gear, you're going to want to run topazes. Topazes are going to give you damage reduction while you're crowd controlled. And a lot of it up to 50% if you put all five in, which you should do, despite my Ruby that's here because I was doing some testing, you should put five topazes in, right? That's most likely what's going to feel the best. It's going to be 50% damage reduction while crowd controlled and that's when you're in danger is while you're crowd controlled and that's a massive amount of damage reduction 50 percent. and once you've done those things and you can do those really quick it's not nearly as hard as it sounds to throw on those three defensive aspects uh, a lot of them come from dungeons both of those actually both of the ones i mentioned you can go run the dungeon get the aspect unlocked in your codex and then slap it on gear anytime you upgrade it's an aspect you can always have the minimum values on anytime you want and they drop pretty frequently out in the wild also so you can get better rolls on them that way another thing you're gonna want to do when you get into World Tier 3 and beyond is the Hell Tides. Hell Tides are going to be really important because there's resources here that you can get that are going to allow you to reroll your stats on your gear. It's going to be very common where you get a piece of gear like this and it's going to have one bad stat, but the rest are pretty good, right? And that's when you're going to want to reroll that stat off. And I have kind of a motto. It's always worth rerolling once. Like the first reroll is very, very cheap. So if you get an item and you're like, man, it's almost good, go reroll it. Reroll it one time. That first reroll is really cheap. See what happens. It might land the most most perfect role. If it does use it, if it doesn't, you know, trash it, sell it, whatever, uh, vendor it, no big deal. And as you can see here on this amulet, I've got two different defensive stats. I've got damage reduction, 10.7%, and I've also got 15.3% damage reduction from close enemies, right? So lots of damage reduction. Another thing that's worth mentioning is if you are in the 50 to 70 range and you're starting to feel like you're starting to get altitis, right? You're starting to crave an alt. You're wondering what it's going to be like on the other side of the fence. You're seeing that one other class zip through the group content and you're seeing them in the legions and you're seeing them on the world boss is just absolutely dominating right and you're starting to think to yourself maybe i should make one of those and maybe you should it might be a ton of fun don't stop yourself from doing that i love making alts in these games i've got an 80 sorcerer this almost 77 necro here i've got a druid a barb right they're all coming up and i've even got a rogue right so i've got all five going right now i can't help myself i love making new classes and trying out new builds making new builds and that's okay but before you make that alt definitely consider finishing the renown grind on that first character you're like ah oh, i kind of want to make an alt then do it just go ahead bite the bullet go grab all those altars of lilith go max out your renown in each zone if you can if you're willing to get that tier 5 reward which is going to be four paragon points per zone for a total of 20 paragon points which is going to feel so good when you get that alt and every alt after that to 50 and they have those 20 paragon points to spend right when they hit 50 it's really going to help accelerate your characters getting through world tier 3 and into world tier 4 as soon as possible and world tier 4 like we've discussed is where you really want to be that's where you start finding gear that is actually what you're going to wear for the last half of the game basically whereas in world tier 3 is kind of an awkward stepping stone between the beginning of the game where you're playing through the story and the end of the game where you're looking for your end game gear you've got this world tier 3 phase where it's just the sacred gear that's it's only good for these like 10 levels and then you're out of it you're moving on to ancestral gear which is potentially best in slot for the rest of your character's life now speaking of paragon points you're going to be getting glyphs as you level up you're going to find these glyphs out in the wild and these things are going to be really important to your character's success success in world tier three and four so don't neglect these don't go dungeon grinding right it was really popular at the launch of the game and there's a lot of information out there that was true when the game launched that is no longer true because blizzard has been releasing patches and one of those pieces of information is to go grind dungeons like open world dungeons just go beat your head against the wall and grind one open world dungeon over and over and over again because for a short time at launch that was the most effective way to level and there's a lot of downsides to that now one 
is Blizzard has nerfed all of the best dungeon grinding locations. So it's no longer the best way to level. And there's a lot of cases that you can make against it. For instance, one, you're not going to be getting the good gear, right? You're not going to be getting those ancestral items. You're going to be fighting mobs that are your level rather than fighting mobs that can be quite a bit higher than your level and dropping much better gear. Much better gear is going to allow you to farm mobs faster, right? And you're not going to be leveling glyphs if you're running those dungeons. Whereas if you go into nightmare dungeons, you're going to get glyphs to drop and you're going to get glyphs to level. So you'll level your glyphs and a substantial amount of your character's power is going to come from this board and getting these glyphs socketed and then leveling these glyphs up. These are huge damage multipliers. Each glyph that you get so sooner than later, you want to get that first glyph in right away. And then you want to get that second glyph in almost right away and start working your way unless you've got a really good reason not to go straight for that third glyph. You know, you want to start working your way to that third glyph. And then while you're doing that, you're leveling each one up to 15 so that you get the expanded radius. So you get even more nodes powering up that glyph. You can see here, this one's doing 26% increased damage for me. This glyph here is increasing my damage by 81% to close enemies while also reducing the damage I take. Another great glyph, by the way, if your character's feeling squishy is territorial. If your character's feeling squishy, this is a great glyph. It's increasing your damage by a lot against close enemies, and it's also reducing your damage by 10% from close enemies. It's a huge for both increasing your damage and decreasing the damage you take. This is a great glyph. Can't recommend it enough. So take advantage of it. And then there's this one over here that's increasing my damage by 53, 54%, right? So huge multipliers from these glyphs. Take advantage of those. Don't underestimate them. Don't spend your time leveling in dungeons where you're just going to have to jump into nightmare dungeons later anyway, and then grind out your glyph XP, which you can only get in nightmare dungeons. So nightmare dungeons are better for so many reasons. They're better because you get better drops. They're better because you have a chance at the uniques, a much higher chance of unique drops. In fact, Blizzard has confirmed that the best drop rates in the game exist inside of the nightmare dungeons right now. So you, that's where you want to be if you're looking for a unique that complements your build. Maybe you're following a build guide and it has a unique in it that really kind of makes the whole thing work. You're going to find that unique most likely in these nightmare dungeons and pretty quickly. I find that's I think that's the difference when I say I've never had to farm for a really long time for a unique. I think it's because I've always spent all my time in the nightmare dungeons, whereas people that seem to be taking a while to find the unique for their build, they're grinding out regular dungeons inside of the open world, which, you know, the drop right there is just not that great. And the mob levels are kind of low. So those are the biggest mistakes that I'm seeing players make a lot from like level 50 to 70, how they're using their obols, when they're using their obols, where they're leveling up, you know, what what they're prioritizing uh, and why they're dying so much from 50 to 70 as they realize that, oh, defensive stats do matter and defensive aspects are actually really valid and necessary with most builds. So take advantage of those. If you know of any good suggestions to pass on to other players, leave it down down in the comments below, kind of like a take a penny, leave a penny kind of situation. If you've got good advice, leave it in a comment below. And if there's enough great comments down there, I'll make a video out of them. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Diablo content. If you ever want to hang out while I'm live, I stream on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. If you watch my Twitch stream all month, there's free drops for cosmetics for all of the classes, as well as the ability to give two subs to unlock this mount right here, which is the biggest mount in the game. It is physically larger than any other mount. I'm just saying, if you you want it, it's there all you got to do is give two subs and it's yours if you're looking for a really strong really fun build to play check out one of the build guides popping up on screen right now